Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and the foremost common rider decade apologist. Do not panic. This is just a random review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Greg. Just Greg. For joining my Patreon campaign. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world to me. Thank you for helping to keep the channel going and to keep the daily content coming. The grind continues as long as you guys want me to grind. And I will do that for you day in, day out. That is my duty as a daily re uh, toy reviewer. So, this is the big day. If we make it through the first and the number is still over 700 on my Patreon, we're going to be doing Transformers Prime Season 1. And then if it maintains that level, we're going to do Season 2 and then Season 3 in the movie. <sighs> I have to remind you because Patreon doesn't keep track of goals anymore. But I like the format, so I'm going to figure out how to do that. But in the meantime, thank you guys for the support. And now... <laughs> so, Cyclonus was my toy of the year in 2021. I thought it was brilliantly engineered, captured the character really, really well really clean transformation just like all around one of the best bits of uh engineering at the retail level i had seen in a long time and now here we are a couple years later we are staring at his remold metal hawk the most i i really did like the last character i would have expected for hasbro to drag up because he's primarily known as a japanese only character which uh i guess now uh <laughs> that's a little bit unshaky you know that we we can't really say that anymore can we so let's see how this turned out as you can see lots of differences already to the way this toy looks you can see familiar elements but for the most part we have swapped that cybertronian jet for this cybertronian jet i didn't think that went through very well so we, we have a much more standard style fighter jet. Let's say that. It's obviously very futuristic and very stylized, but it is still ultimately at its core a fighter jet in more traditional stance with the wings swept backwards instead of forwards. They're on the middle of the, of the jet, not the back side of it. You get my point. It looks like a much more traditional jet and it does look quite good at that. Let me uh, go ahead and take the sword off the top. There are two tabs that will uh, be specifically for holding the sword on there. To give a nice clean look at how that vehicle mode looks, you can see it is cast mostly in a very rich shade of blue along with some very light gray bordering on off-white, I would say. And then you have the wings that are a mix of painted and molded red, which is the same painted red you see on the tail fins. It's a nice color combination. It's strangely, like, it's strangely American patriotic for some reason. It's very red, white, and blue, and uh, freedom and french fries and all that, even though it's a Japanese-only character. Uh, it's not a bad color palette. It's very different from how Cyclonus works, and that solid, just multi-shades of purple look that he had in his toy. Yeah, it's a very big departure, which is a good thing. There are some traits that are a little bit of a downside to that, like the fact that the unpainted plastic that makes up a lot of the backside of the robot mode, where all that engineering has to hold on to, that uh, breaks up the blue in a way that really isn't as smooth as I would like it. I'd really like that gray to be painted on these two sections here. That's a hinge, so that's a little bit iffy, but that's just a tab-in spot. That would actually work out. Uh, and that would like kind of make it smoother and make it seem like that extra gray streaks through it were intentional. But we don't get that. So uh, we, we go with uh, this broken up look, which, you know, a lot of remolds and repaints end up doing this kind of thing. It's a little unfortunate, but, you know, it's looked I've seen much worse examples uh, in the past. Uh, if we look toward the front, the cockpit is painted red. You've got the intakes that are sculpted in along the sides. Looking to the back, uh, we have some thrusters in there. There's no port for blast effects, which is a little bit of a bummer. Not that I use blast effects often, but the the ability to do it is appreciated. 
in general, this toy really doesn't go for the the five millimeter play pattern nearly as much as some of these other toys. You can see they do have five millimeter ports on the undersides of the wings and then one here at the top. So you do get a little bit, but you can't deck your uh, you can't deck your metal hawk out too much. I say that. Uh, these parts are actually extra accept uh, weapon accessories. Like any good pretender, it looks uh, it, it is going to look very incomplete if you do not attach the weapons. So we can take the weapons off, and that's going to reveal some more five millimeter ports underneath that you can use to customize your metal hawk a little bit more. But I definitely do think he looks a little bit weird without those extra tail fins. So. Maybe not the most preferred option, but it does exist. Uh, beyond that, yeah, nice solid jet, not a whole lot of undercarriage. Like, it does a good job of balancing the whole bulk of the vehicle mode. Looks really, really nice. Really, really clean. I like it. All right, so it goes out of the way, and we should probably transform it to see what's going on. So the transformation scheme is one of the things that made the original Cyclonus toy so good to go with such a smooth looking vehicle mode into a very different looking and still smooth robot mode. Super impressive job. So how does Metal Hawk do? So you'll be maybe not surprised to know that the transformation has been simplified. We're not going to be doing quite as much as we do on Cyclonus. That largely become, is from the, the placement of the wings being centralized on the jet rather than swept toward the back. So with the, the wings hinged upward, we're going to leave those there for now because it's a little bit more convenient for, for the moment. Yeah, just untab those from the side. Uh, from there, I'm going to start extending out the legs. It works just like Cyclonus's. They just kind of collapse uh, inward. Go ahead and split those off. Go to the back. The rear section is going to flip up, revealing the feet. And we flip that part down to replace. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Rear section flip up first, then flip up the back. Flip it down. Close it back up. There are your legs. All right. For the torso, this whole back section has to rotate 180 degrees. No more. No less, you know how that works by now. At that point, we can drop the front and we can drop the back. With that dropped, I'll get my hair off of the toy and then we'll clip the, the nose cone downward, flip forward like so, close the chest back up, close the back back up. From there, fold out the hands. Oh, hang on slipped a step the front the back side connects into the front side on tabs on these little hinges that are holding its shoulders make sure that those are actually clipped in correctly and then just to clean him up we're going to fold his wings uh, back on their double hinge the same way that the wings fold back on Cyclonus and that is going to do it that's gonna be our metal hawk in his robot mode so this transformation definitely feels similar but it does have a few little trappings going on of its own that makes it feel a good bit different from how Cyclonus works. It is something of a simplification. It doesn't do quite as much to rework the shape, but it doesn't have to. And I do think it's a decently enough mold uh, to make the whole thing work. So now that we have him in robot mode, just like Cyclonus, he presents a very nice, sharp, clean looking robot that does a pretty good job of handling its kibble and junk. It's got a little bit more going on, and we'll examine that in close up. But for the most part, he comes across very, very clean. No real backpack to speak of. A lot of it is just handled in the bulk of the legs and with the torso's transformation elements, which is what I really like to see. Looks really, really brilliant here. Still love how it looks overall. So... At this point, since this is a remold, let me put him over here, and then I'm going to drop a standard Cyclonus on you. Um, my little window is going to block a little bit of it, but you can mostly see what is still going on with this toy and where the similarities line up. So the feet, the upper arms, and uh, the bicep sections, you're going to see the same parts. You're going to see this, uh, a lot of the same uh, 
elements there but and maybe the hands as well but for the most part look at how much is different here you know the, you know the you know the lower arms completely different obviously the head and the torso as well uh the wings uh they are very different there's a weird little bit of engineering to metal hawk's wings actually if you take a look there are insets there uh, where Cyclonus's wings had a, like a fold-in element to them to narrow them down for the robot mode. Metal Hawk kind of has those parts and they still exist, but they're hard molded into the toy now, or, or they're at least like permanently adhered there. Uh, so it feels like there's a transformation step missing. There is not. It's just how Metal Hawk works differently from Cyclonus. But you can see they share some chemistry but they are so different looking and part of it is just that color scheme that now has this huge hit of gold in it now of course it is not metallic gold it is just this like uh almost like a like goldenrod yellow so it's a much more rich yellow that does give that appearance of gold without being uh, potentially like disastrous years down the line uh as far as accuracy goes, they tried. Now they're they're borrowing a mold for this, so there are some uh, there are some things. You know, he's missing the red in the middle of his arms, but for the most part, he does come across pretty well as the original Metal Hawk. We take in close again, so you can see a nice look at the head. Definitely looks the part. Definitely matches the leader of the uh, Pretenders very very well. Uh, I like the I like the chest design as well. Like I like that heavy mechanical look. It's very different from Cyclonus. Really, really, really like it. So happy with them so far. Now there are a few weird grievances here. One of them is going to come from the legs, where the knees. Uh, you'll find that as you try to pose the knees, the hinges that hold the knees for transformation are actually looser than the knees you actually pose with. So a little bit of care needs to be given so that the leg does not collapse in while you're trying to pose it uh, and that you're bending the right thing so your pose looks okay. So it's just a weird little element that uh, I kind of got. I don't know. Just me. It might just be mine too. Keep in mind, you know, hinge tolerances is a mileage may vary thing. Not everyone's going to have it. Here's an element that I don't think anyone's really picked up on. What I have him in here is something of an anime accurate arrangement for his wings. However, if you remember the original toy, they are swept straight back. Now, thanks to the double hinge, you can just do that. So you can either match the toy or you can match the animation model, depending on which version of Metal Hawk you want. It's probably not intentional. It comes from the transformation, but I love the fact that you can do it. I love the fact that there is an option there if you want them to look more toy accurate. Even if it's unintentional, it's a great little bit of variety to have along with the toy. So, uh, we mentioned the looseness of the knees. So I guess we can go into uh, articulation here a little bit. So as we saw, the head has a really good amount of uh, range to it in the ball joint. Works full 360, but it also has up and down movement as well. Shoulders are universal in a really good way. It doesn't have that like weirdness that some shoulders have had lately. Uh, the arms do have a bicep swivel that works really well. 90 degree elbow. This is the only part where you can see that extra like little junk that's hanging on. Like it's just kind of like if the light would cooperate. That little chunk hanging off the forearm. That's really all the kibble you're getting on this guy. All right. Waist. Yep. He's got a waist joint there. That works. Universal hips work really well. Thigh rotation all the way around. Knees, if you break the transformation and use the hinge for the for the transformation as well, you can go beyond the 90. Always good to see. Uh, it does look a little bit weird, but you can do it. And then, of course, the angle tilt as well. So, rocking a ton of articulation as you would expect of a modern Voyager. Now, let's talk accessorizing. So... In this mode, we have a little bit more to work with. You can see the shoulders have a 5mm port there in the side. Uh, you can also see it there on the legs as well. So that's four points. Aside from his hands, that's six. And then the wings are still accessible, kinda. If, especially if you sweep them back. So there you go with eight. And then a ninth one there on the back. And then you have two more on the bottom side. 
So you're looking at 13 points where you can accessorize Metal Hawk's robot mode. I don't have any uh, weaponizers or junkions handy on me. So how about we just armor him up with the type of, with the weapons he came with? So the the tail fins they do pop off and they can become handguns. They work well enough for that. You can put them back on the legs to bulk those out, or you can add them onto his shoulders to give him a little bit of a wider, more armored look. Uh, so that that is just a few of your options left to your imagination. And then there is his sword. You know, it just come kind of comes with the uh, the territory. If you're a Japanese transformer leader, you're probably gonna have a sword at some point. It just is a thing, and it's not a bad sword either. So, oh, did I forget? Yeah, I forgot his wrists articulate too. They're so tight, I tend to forget the wrist articulation is there. But it is there. It works well. Gives Metal Hawk just a little bit more posability, as if he needed more. But then again, more posability, always a good thing. So that, my friends, is... That is Legacy Evolution Metal Hawk. It's been a long time since he got a proper toy. There's debate over how he should be depicted. Remember, BotCon decided that his outer shell was the default, and that's what they made a Transformer out of. I think everyone kind of agreed that looked really weird. I, I'm actually kind of happy they went with just the inner robot. Not only leaves a third-party company available to like just make some gigantic shell for this guy to fit into, uh, but it also fits in better with the rest of your generation's line, which is kind of what they're going for with Legacy. No matter where it comes from, it looks right on a shelf together. It looks like it's from the same collection. And this one is great for a collection. I'm really happy with it. I would not say he's as good as Cyclonus, just because I don't. I feel like he's lacking the complexity. And of course, aesthetically, he doesn't look as solid, but he still looks really, really good. It's a great representation of the character. Certainly better than what we got in Power of the Primes. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.